Angeli, see you again next Saturday, same time, same place. But let's review the report on matters environment, where the manifestation of climate change and global warming can be visibly seen through the dwindling waters of the famous Ewasongiro River, a lifeline for the pastoralist communities. The Camel Caravan is an event that is organized annually to raise awareness about the Ewasongiro River. This year, the participants trekked for five days along the path of the river, weary and only resting by the river, the river bank at night. Our senior reporter Carol Nderi now brings us a special story on the camel caravan journey. <laughs> The mighty Ewa Sonyiro River, magnificent in its splendor. Quite a captivating sight. So majestic is this river that it cuts across an impressive 10 counties. Some of these counties include Laikipia, Samburu, Isiolo, and Garissa. It flows into the Marti Aquifer and the Lorian Swamp, after which it passes through Somalia, joining the Juba River. It originates from Mount Kenya and the Abadea Water Towers, two of Kenya's five main water towers. It is in this light that the Ewasonyiro River is regarded as a lifeline, especially for the pastoralist communities that depend on it for sustenance. This river is Kenya's third longest river and supports livelihoods of approximately 3.6 million people. However, the mighty Awasonyiro River no longer boasts of the volumes of water it once did, sounding an alarm bell to environmentalists and conservationists across the board. These obvious telltale signs of the changing weather patterns have sent experts on a spin. The erratic weather patterns have seen pastoralist communities suffer the biting effects of drought owing to the dwindling water levels. Sometimes rivers, water pans and dams would dry up altogether. If you look at here in Isiolo, it's so dry, you cannot get even uh, any, the region is so dry, you cannot get grasses for our cows and for the sheep. So they will have to move somewhere else to look for, 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 for grass. Same, same to people in Samburu County. When you do not have water actually, that means your life is actually endangered. <laughs> In a bid to save this significant water source, an idea was born to a section of conservationists. Dubbed the Iwaso Nyiro Camel Caravan, this entails a journey across the river. This river journey initiative is based on the pastoralist traditions of the indigenous people of the Ewasonyiro River Basin ecosystem. The Ewasonyiro River Camel Caravan is a five-day journey where the participants embark on a voyage that will see them walk across 250 to 300 kilometers along the Ewasonyiro River. This Camel Caravan campaign aims to inform and educate the communities and their leaders on climate change adaptation environmental conservation and peaceful coexistence. Conflicts emanating from search for water and pasture and increased incidents of cattle grassland are pointers to why awareness and enlightenment is important. The pastoralists keep a variety of animals, but most notably camels. Camels are resilient and can go for long treks without water, hence why they are the preferred livestock in these parts of the country. Women often have to walk long distances in search of this precious commodity, even in the face of the drying rivers. And even when they find the water, it is not always clean. Wakati 
na tunanganga na ukiwa ndani ya hiyo kisima unakuta wanyama wamekuingilia sasa watu wengine wangepaswa kukaa nje kuchunga wanyama wakiteremka kutafuta pia maji lakini wasi ikitirika wanyama wanakunya hiyo yenye inatirika na nyinyi mnashota hizi kisima kidogo kidogo juu tunatafuta basili ya maji at least safi ndio kwa siku mimi nashota jerkeni nini nimekuja da asubuhi nikapeleka jerkeni nyingine nyumbani nikarudi saa hii alafu baadaye tena nikakuja tena nitakuja bado nitakuja kushota tena maji hoi jirani ni mbaya nimemaliza ngombe nimemaliza mbusi paka baki na taasisi ya potangi hiyo maji napata tu kidogo hata watoto hapati hiyo nini usafi kwa mwili yao the camel caravan's significance cannot be overemphasized. It is a crucial attempt in saving the Ewaso Nero. Early morning of the five-day trek, two groups are preparing for the walk. They have to cover about 300 kilometers preaching the conservation message. One group is in Laikipia County and the other is in Merti, Isilo County. They have to survive in the wilderness for the five days, and this, they are aware, will not be an easy task. Ah. Boniface and Auma are yes. lives. The community is a very major stakeholder because it is the community that conserves this water. It's the community that depends uh, directly on this water. So I believe that it is the community that is supposed to be sensitized and, uh, and, and uh, even capacity built on conservation of uh, the water uh, doing this work. But I expect it's, gonna, it's, go, it's going to be a little bit of fun. One thing I like about the camels, it's the cheapest way to move around. You don't get puncture, you don't need a lot of fuel. The first day will be going four, five hours. The following day is more harder. The other side is actually very, very hot, very, very hot. So it will need people to wake up at 4, 4, 4.30 ready to leave at 5.30 to 6 latest, because here gets really, really hot. Other than climate change occasioned by global warming, other threats to the river include pollution, cultivation along river banks, illegal obstruction of water upstream, and general environmental degradation along the river basin. The other group, the Isilo group, has started the journey. A majority are Muslims, and they seek Allah's divine intervention before beginning the journey. The different groups will congregate at Archer's Post in Isilo County on the fifth and final day of the trek. It is a journey that is characterized by different intrigues, upheavals, and largely unique experiences. Along the way, sometimes fatigue overwhelms them, and they spend nights in tents. The body refused. <laughs> totally. Totally. Refused to move. <laughs> huh? As much as you are so wanted to move. <laughs> But the body refused. We were hungry and we go to Manyatas and we got some camel milk and energized ourselves on the way. We came across wildlife on our way, especially elephants. We found them at the drinking water, drinking points, drinking water. Uh, we had to scare them away. They were scared of the camels, so they did not, there was no risk. <laughs> They light fires to keep them warm. Music comes alive after a much-needed meal of meat. The staple pastoralist diet. The expansive region that includes Laikipia, Isiolo, and Samburu has several conservancies and ecologies that attract tourists from across the world. Drought is really uh, tough at the moment. Uh, I, can actually, I can actually compare it with the 2009 drought. Though in 2009, we lost a lot of elephants. You know, big percentage I mean, of uh, you know, uh, animals that died were buffalo and elephants. The Gravy Zebra is one of the unique wildlife here, seen here competing for pasture with the herders' livestock, as well as other wildlife. Quite the survival for the fittest. Color red elephants have been affected too, and lions have not been spared either. The competition of the encroachment within these core areas, like Samburu National Reserve, Chaba National Reserve, or Buffalo Spring, that whenever it happened like the drought, 
also people, the pressure of people coming there. And therefore, even those little areas that we assume that is 100% safe for the land, it's no longer not because of that encroachment. During this normal flow, the water lovers and the way it flows, you know, you realize, you can see uh, the wind of the river will have, uh, will have actually been here. But you, you realize right now, it's very patchy. When you look there, there's no water. Meet Johnson Mali Olekaunga, the director of Indigenous Movement for Peace Advancement and Conflict Transformation Impact. Mali Olekaunga is also a consultant on Indigenous people's rights with an observer status to the African Commission on Human and People's Rights. Large rivers like this and the national government, we need uh, the Water Tower Authority to be able, uh, with uh, other institutions like the Wasonyuro North Development Authority, the Ministry of Water, and environment, and I mean and the irrigation. We want uh, the, uh, them to support community initiatives in terms of putting, strengthening water resource users associations uh, to, con to, uh, uh, to have a regulation um, for how water is used and abstracted, to protect a number of uh, uh, wetlands along the river that feed into the river. Human activities such as sand harvesting along the riverbanks has greatly contributed to the degradation we meet a group of sand harvesters loading sand into the lorries. It's a dangerous thing coming because if they take away all the sand from the river, when the water, when, when it rains and there's uh, a lot of water coming from the river, the movement of water will be, you know, will be so quick. There are plans in the pipeline that touch on mega infrastructural and communication projects and elapse it, such as the proposed Isiolo Megadam, the resort city railway and oil pipelines. These will pass through three counties and is expected to translate in an increase in demand for water. The communities affected therefore want to be involved and consulted through the various project implementation phases. Mobility has been uh, restricted by a number of development about conservation, so it's not easy as it used to be. So to me, I think uh, when community land are, uh, lands are defined, communities can be able to to have a regulated movement and movement pattern, to, to be able to use certain areas at different times, but also to be able to take advantage of a number of uh, uh, markets. There are a number of uh, livestock markets where they can sell their market and also savings. The participants of the Camel Caravan meet several communities along the way and they use the chance to inform them about environmental conservation and peace. It's, be it's better to involve the communities, to use the communities themselves, to solve their own problems. With the successful rangelands within our conservancies, we will say yes, we have achieved our 10 goals because wildlife will benefit, community will benefit, and livestock will benefit, and our pastoral communities will have achieved our entire goal of being the pastoral communities with their proper planned grazing measures within our area. After a long five days, the communities finally arrive at Arches Post, the designated meeting place. They come together here despite being geographically separated by the highway. I feel that I've accomplished something and that, that is going to be positive to the community. And uh, I hope and I believe that uh, you're going to come up with a better, better intervention, better mitigation measures. We're teaming up with our brothers, Boranas and Somali from the downstream. And um, I must say it's been a bit of a challenge, but because it's something we really want to achieve, um, it should be easy. The Borana Somali group has also arrived. They come together here despite being geographically separated by the highway. Issue yote ni issue ya national government. Lakini kwa devolution ya county serikali sasa imeletwa kwetu ni jukumu yetu sasa serikali ya ugatusi ifuatilie ifuachukue hii jukumu na ile ifuate hii maneno. The following morning, all are headed to the bank of the Iwasonyuro River, where leaders are invited. As we exploit these avenues of peace, let's develop. As we develop, let's sustain peace because peace is development and development is peace. All in all, the experience has been good. Actually, if there could be funds, this should be an annual event. 
proud moment for each and every participant as they receive their certificates of participation. Joyous that they undertook a part in the Camel Caravan that is such an important part of the conservation journey. Carol Derry for Katie News in Isiolo. Sova.